One of the biggest mysteries of our existence is also one of the biggest mysteries of physics, time. We experience time as passing with a special moment that we call now. Now you're watching this video. Half an hour ago you were doing something else. Whatever you did, there's no way to change it. And what you will do in half an hour is up to you. At least that's how we perceive time. Here Sabine gives a summary about the mysterious nature of time how we perceive it as passing and how we experience past, present and future. She finishes by saying, what physics tells us about time is very different from our perception. The one who figured this out was none other than Albert Einstein. Then from the 37 second mark to the 43 second mark, she asks, what did Einstein teach us about past, present and future? And then states, that's what we'll talk about today. When she mentioned what physics tells us about time is very different from our perceptions and the one who figured it out was Albert Einstein, she's referring to Einstein's theory of special relativity. It's a theory that's widely accepted despite the fact since its proposition in 1905 it still hasn't ticked all the boxes of the scientific method such as experimentation. Special relativity basically states that time is a fourth dimension, which permits events to move forward into the future. Question begs, why do events require a fourth dimension, if they unfold in three-dimensional fashion? Consider walking as an example, say in a forward direction. There is the obvious forward direction you're walking in, but this event is still unfolding in 3D because we're moving forward, but also going slightly up and down and side to side when we walk. What is actually responsible for an event to unfold are the four fundamental forces of nature, such as gravity, electromagnetism, and the weak and strong nuclear force. Because events are causal, and causality is a product of interactions, and these four forces are responsible for every interaction in the universe. Therefore, the four fundamental forces of nature are responsible for causality. With the four fundamental forces propelling events and the three dimensions of space there to accommodate their unfolding, what then is preventing events from occurring that a fourth dimension is required? In space, we can go forward, backward, left, right or up and down. In time, we can only go forward. Sabine here talks about our ability to go in any three directions, but in time, we can only go forward. Perceiving time as having direction is a false perception. Events slash time don't follow a direction, but rather the logical order of cause and effect. To illustrate, take counting for example, because time is a number system and counting them is an event. Say counting from 1 to 24 like the hours in a day, it's perceived as going forward, but it can also be described as going up in number. Now, that's two directions to describe the same process, because literally, there is no direction, just the logical order of cause and effect. In far and Middle Eastern countries, where writing is done right to left, as opposed to our left to right, time's forward direction there is also perceived as right to left, as opposed to our left to right. Direction with regard to events slash time should only be taken figuratively, like when someone is making forward strides into progress or taking backward steps. What then is time? It's been defined as what the clock measures. A very simple and effective argument against this definition is, if we don't know what time is, then how do we know clocks measure it? What clocks do actually measure is duration. Now, you may be thinking that duration is time, so therefore clocks do measure time. But duration isn't actually time because originally it wasn't a temporal term, but rather an event-related one, as duration comes from the Latin durere, meaning to harden, which is a process of an event. There are a number of other terms that have changed in meaning from their etymology. We're going to consider past, present and future, seeing as Sabine at 028 to 043 seconds referred to these terms and what Einstein taught us about them as something to be considered.
Sabine's take on whether the past still exists is yes, due to the compatibility between special relativity and quantum mechanics. We're now going to consider the etymology of past, present and future and see if the original meanings are compatible with the current definitions and what it means if they're not. Past comes from the Old English past, P-A-S-S-E-D, which as we know means gone, like when someone dies. Present comes from the Latin praesert, meaning being at hand, describing the here and now. Future comes from the Latin futurus, meaning grow, become. The only term here to maintain its original meaning is present, where reality is happening. Past and future's original meaning changed from being event-based terms that don't imply any reality to temporal ones that are considered as real as the present. This is according to the eternalist view. The block universe view states that only the past and present exist with the future yet to be determined. Question begs, what happened in history that caused the change from the original meaning of past and future? That would have to be the invention of the clock, because past and future went from being event-related words to time-related ones, and clocks are instruments of time. Saying instruments of time doesn't mean the invention for tracking the day and year. Time slash Cronus was coined in ancient Greece with the abstract sense in mind after people started experiencing the passage of the units of the clock and calendar as being representative of not only the degrees of Earth spinning in orbit, but also representative of something fundamental. So first, there was an addition made to the clock's job description, when people started experiencing the sense of what can't be known as time passing. Then, due to the intellectual constructs that developed, past and future came to be perceived in a temporal, dimensional way, rather than an event-based way. This change from the original meaning of past and future with the present holding its original meaning is very telling because the present is the only tense of the three to be regarded as timeless. Past and future went from being event-related words to temporal ones. Question then is, is the present a mistake because it, was he- because it held its original meaning, or are past and future mistakes for not holding their original meanings. Do discoveries in general change the original meaning of terminologies? I don't think so. Something worthy of consideration is the implication that exists if special relativity is factual. What it would mean is that thousands of years ago, somebody put a stick in the ground to track the day's passage, which inadvertently led to the discovery of the fourth dimension. This sense of time passing is an illusion, because first of all, it's in recognition of our invented units. And, as already mentioned, the implication is, if it's real, is that thousands of years ago, someone put a stick in the ground to track the passage of the day, and inadvertently led to the discovery of the fourth dimension. If you think also about how close this sense of time passing is to the passage of the day and year, it's just the passage of the day and year, with the progress of their phases from morning to morning and spring to spring being converted into time units. This creates an effect that makes us perceive the passage of the day and year as the passage of time. In the world of magical illusions, to accomplish an illusion, what's required are props and misdirection. Misdirection is where attention is drawn to one thing to take it away from something else. This is done to obscure the method and mechanics of the trick. With the illusion of time passing, the units of measurement provide the misdirection, because the focus is on the passing of the units, which takes attention away from what the units actually represent, which is the passing of the day and year. Basically, the rotations are the props which create the passing effect and the units of measurement create the misdirection for the time effect. This is a result of using technology, the clock and calendar, with nature, Earth's rotations. This caused our perceptions to change because before this invention we lived on a planet that's in a solar system, but since then we've actually been living on a clock that's in a calendar. 
being bombarded by time units on our daily and yearly passages through space. Earlier we considered the etymology of past, present and future. And duration. Another word that's worthy of consideration, especially in light of our current discussion, is spell. An example of the word in use would be, he was left waiting for a long spell. The likely reason the time came to be referred to as spell is because the long time that someone may be left waiting is unknown, mysterious, and therefore has a magical effect. Spells aren't used in the world of magical illusions. It's a dark arts practice, but people are spellbound by time passing.